Good dub of the morning to you, whosoever. This is Tony, whosoever, reporting live behind enemy lines, reporting from the Nebuchadnezzar. Uh, again, guys, uh, we're in the book of Luke. I uh, hope you're encouraged. Again, to all your tribulation saints. Um, remember, Jesus was rejected when he went to Galilee, uh, his hometown. Remember, uh, we, we read uh, Nazareth uh, concerning Jesus. Now, every year, Jesus' parents went to Jerusalem for the festival of the Passover. When he was 12 years old, they went up to the festival according to the custom. After the festival was over, while his parents were, were returning home, you know, what happened to Jesus then was done so that we, we would have a Bible story, by the way, guys. Um, Remember uh, the ministry of John the Baptist? You know, he was calling out uh, the, the Pharisees, the reason why he did it, because so we can have a Bible story. You know, guys, can I encourage you? You're, one, you're a Bible story in yourself. You know, what God is doing in your life. You know, what God continues to do. You know, we're going to see the, the ministry of John the Baptist. We're going to see the ministry of Jesus. Um, here we're going to hear the story of of Jesus basically getting lost in the temple or the boy Jesus uh, the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem but they were unaware of it thinking he, he was in the company they traveled on for the day then they began looking for him among the relatives and friends and when they did not find him they went back to Jerusalem to look for him after three days they found him in the temple court sitting among the teachers listening to them and asking them questions. Everyone who heard him was amazed at his understanding and his answers. When his parents saw him, they were astonished. His mother said to him, Son, why have you treated us like this? Your father and I have been anxious searching for you. Again, guys, remember uh, God's promise to Mary that he would be the, can you imagine you're the mother of the Messiah and you lost him? You know, or assuming that Jesus was, you know, Jesus was uh, in the caravan and he wasn't. You know, guys, let's never uh, uh, assume uh, anything with the Lord, right? Um, remember, uh, I want to reread this with Pastor McGee says uh, uh, again. Uh, next is recording the incident of only Dr. Luke relates. Luke does this because he is a pedestrian and is interested in the Lord as a boy, as well as a man. Luke lifts one scene out of the boyhood of Jesus when he was 12 years old. Since nothing is recorded in the Gospels about the early life of Jesus, some people call this the segment of his life. The silent years. I do not consider them silent years. I believe that the Old Testament scriptures fill in those years. If you look closely, Luke's account is detailed, isolated incident that took place when Jesus was 12 years old. Again, now his parents went to Jerusalem every year uh, at the feast of the Passover. Uh, again, guys, remember, uh, uh, you know, Jesus had already gone with them 12, 13 times probably. 12 times, at least 12 times, 12 or 13 times every year. So Jesus is now 12 years old. Uh, Mary and Joseph were raising a normal, healthy child. He did not run around wearing a halo, friend. The artists in the Middle Age had some strange conceptions about the Lord Jesus, both as a child or as an adult. I do not believe that he looked like any other, any of those, those ideas. We just... Uh, the normal boy, you know, as a growing up Catholic, I would see baby Jesus doing the hand signal. You know, I don't know what it was. I think it was that one, right? As in a statue with a halo. Um, but again, guys, um, this is not what the Word of God pictures Jesus as. And in, in those days, people traveled in companies. When the time came to leave Jerusalem, the folks going to Galilee gathered together at a town at the little town right north of Jerusalem to begin their journey home. You know, guys, so they wouldn't be robbed or robbers or, you know, they're stronger in numbers, right? Um, that way they were, 
if they they were they missed him joseph probably said where is jesus and mary replied i thought he was with you they looked for him among all the people they knew and they discovered that he was missing they returned to jerusalem they looked for jesus for three days and where do you suppose they found him in the temple and it came to pass that after three days they found him in the temple sitting in the midst of the doctors both hearing them and asking them questions and all that heard him were astonished at his understanding and answers and when they saw him they were amazed and his mother said unto him son why thou thou been mean to us don't you see me and your dad have anxiety you know uh, and when mary and joseph finally found jesus in the temple he was standing in the midst of of the learned doctors and the and the teachers of the day both hearing them and asking them questions. Apparently, he was asking them questions they could not answer, and they were astonished at his answers. Remember, he was only 12. I think it's clear that Mary and Joseph were a little provoked provoked with him. The answer of Jesus revealed his surprise that they did not realize he sounds to be about his father's business. Now, if Joseph were his father, he would have stepped out and said, Well, what are you trying to do? Get some carpenter work here in Jerusalem? No, his father was not Joseph. He was speaking of his business of his heavenly father. Mary at this point did not exactly appreciate who he was and what his work entailed. But she pondered these things in her heart. You know, uh, sometimes God is doing a work in our lives, guys. And we don't understand why, you know, your, you know, your girlfriend leaves you or or you don't understand why your job is closing down, or you don't understand why people are being mean to you, or people are calling you names, or putting you down, or, you know, uh, I've realized when I was growing up that if people put you down, it's because uh, they don't have, they, they need to put you down, you know, they, they don't feel good unless they're putting someone down, and then, you know, and that's what sometimes Christians do, guys, I see them walking around, judge not, at least you be judged, you know, you shouldn't go around judging people, I'm a sinner just like anybody else. The only difference is, is I've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. I've been born again, and I and I believe and I trust God's, you know, Joseph, you know, trusted God's leading, you know, when Potiphar's wife, you know, blamed him for something he wasn't doing. You know, Joseph was okay when they were throwing him in prison. Joseph was okay when they threw him in the pit. You know, God had given him a... a a dream that a promise you know that one day everybody all these people would bow down to him and he was trusting the lord that no matter if whether he was in the pit or in chains being or a slave or in potiphar's wife potiphar's house or even in the in the dungeon you know he can trust the lord no matter what he knows what he's doing you know uh, trusting the lord uh, that he knows what he's doing is you know a really a, a walking by faith no matter the circumstances, you know, we can trust the Lord, you know. Today, uh, we can't, God can't lose us. Hey, Tony, where are you at? You know, God knows exactly where we're at, how we're doing. If we feel discouraged, can I encourage you? God sees everything. That is such a great blessing to understand that whatever you're going through, God sees. And he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was subject unto them. But his mother kept all these sayings in her heart. I must be about my father's business. And Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. You know, guys, when we walk with the Lord, we do in increase in wisdom. We do increase in stature. We do increase in favor with God and with man. You know, Jesus was subject to unto his parents this is interesting in the light of the fact that the young people today are in rebellion and are demanding to be heard they say they ought to listen to them i have listened to them says pastor mcgee and i have not heard them say anything yet regardless of all the publicity they are given on the television and radio i personally do not think college students have much to say he is still green behind the ears regardless of his iq the information he has been given is limited and biased to evolution uh, and atheism. Uh, 
They don't understand that God is the creator of heaven and earth. God is the creator of man. God has created each one of us uh, for a purpose. God has given his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, that whosoever should believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. You know, the information that these uh, intellectuals have is knowledge, or at best, or Greek knowledge, but they don't have the spiritual tenacity to understand that if they are not born again and accept Jesus Christ by faith they will go to hell for all eternity the information uh, is not found in their textbooks the information that's really understand comes from the, the Bible guys the Bible you know, there's a voice calling out today it's called the Word of God there is a voice from the pulpits of man there's a voice from uh, you know everything that we see around us you know it's remarkable to see this boy Jesus the son of God obeyed his parents and was subject unto them Dr. Luke gives us a report about those silent years when Jesus was growing to adulthood he grew in wisdom mentally in stature physically and in favor with God spiritually and man socially and in every area, the Lord Jesus Christ was growing into the perfect man um, who would later die uh, for the sins of mankind. So again, guys, may the Lord bless you. Be girded, be strengthened. Tom tomorrow, I'm going to try to do it every day this week since uh, my girlfriend broke up with me. <laughs> We're going to go over John the Baptist prepares the way. You know, I wish I had, I wish I was a millionaire. I could take care of, you know, other people, but I can't, you know. You know. So again, guys, um, trusting the Lord, no matter the circumstances, whether you find yourself, you know, <laughs> kicked to the curb, uh, uh, if you find yourself, uh, you know, in prayer or, 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 you know, seeing the things around us, you know, you can trust no matter what that God sees. God sees you. You know. Remember that neither the birds of the air, as they neither sow nor reap, nor gather into barns, but yet your heavenly Father feeds them. How much more would He feed you, who are His son? You know. God has great plans for all of us, guys. We have eternal life. We have and people. I always say, "Oh, you're getting old." You know, you know, my girlfriend. Oh, you have crow's feet or whatever. And I think, well, I'm pretty young for being eternal. Well, though my outer body perish, my inner man is being renewed daily, day by day. You know, look at the birds of the air, for they neither sow nor reap, nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. You know, we are, are we are more than conquerors, guys, in Christ Jesus. You know, let us, uh, today's morning message is really, you know, uh, let us grow in, in wisdom. Let us grow in stature. Let us grow in favor with God and with man socially. You know, let us love our neighbor and really be a light and a salt to those around us, especially as we head into the end times, guys. We're literally heading into the end times. We got to be a little bit wiser, you know. You know, today we look around; everything's getting so expensive. The famines. What shall we drink? Uh, what should we wear? Uh, you know, the Bible says, "For the pagans run after these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them before you even need them." You know, God is going to take care of you no matter what, guys. You know, uh, I got to move my van. <laughs> my girlfriend's ex girlfriend's not going to let me park it there no more, so. You know, that my that's my that's my ministry van that I want to use one day, especially if I have to sleep in it, right? But who knows, guys? Just keep me in prayer, guys. No matter what, you know, God knows and God understands. You know. Let me read a proverb to you before I, before I hang up. The way of fool seems right to them, but the wise listen to advice. So listen to God's advice in the Bible. Fools show their annoyance at once, but the 
prudent overlook an insult. An honest witness tells the truth, but a false witness tells a lie. You know, be a be a false. Don't be a false witness. Tell the truth about what God is doing in your life. You know, you know, God knows. You know, for what shall a profit a man to gain the whole world but lose his own soul? Remember that, guys. No matter if you gain the whole world and you lose your own soul, you're a fool. That's what the Bible says. I'm a fool if I would have done that. But I was born again in 2003, guys, in my backyard. A couple feet from where I'm standing now, Lord. He knows. He knows. The only two people who were there was my mom and Chuizi. I had two witnesses that see, that see my conversion. And I, I know that something changed. You know, you know, being, being spiritually dead was made alive. Don't listen to the people who don't believe in God and don't believe in God's tenacity, even though they're IQ B200. You know, they're still spiritually dead. They need to be born again. They need the Lord. Because spiritually, you know, I have the Holy Spirit. I have the God of heaven and earth, the Holy Ghost, living and dwelling in me. You know, I got a little bit of help in my life. More, much, a lot more than most people. In Jesus' name, amen.